So competition law in labor markets is a hot topic for many competition bodies around the world, and in particular, the United Kingdom's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA. So the CMA has lately sprung into action in order to research, investigate, and ultimately decide whether the majority of UK's labor markets lack competition due to no poach agreements, salary fixing agreements, and other anti-competitive tactics used by UK employers. In this era of thrift and savings generated by the recession caused by the management of the COVID-19 pandemic, and then the inflation ballooning in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the Competition and Market Authority is particularly attentive that UK citizens get a fair share of remuneration when they go to work every morning to pay their bills. Let's investigate how the Competition and Market Authority is positioning itself as a model competition body in the fight against anti-competitive behavior in labor markets. So what is the CMA doing in relation to competition law and labor markets? Competition issues in labor markets generally fall under the prohibition on anti-competitive agreements pursuant to chapter one of the Competition Act 1998 in the United Kingdom and Article 101 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union. The Competition and Market Authority launched three investigations in labor markets in the United Kingdom since July 2022. The first one started in, in, um, in July 2022, relates to some suspected breaches of competition law in relation to the purchase of freelance services supporting the production and broadcasting of sports content in the UK. The CMA launched an investigation under Section 25, Power of the CMA to Investigate, in the Competition Act 1998, into suspected infringements of the Chapter 1 prohibition of this Competition Act 1988 by undertakings involved in the production and broadcasting of sports content. So, in plain English, the CMA suspects that certain actors in the production and broadcasting of sports content may have used some uh, tactics which are anti competitive and in breach of Chapter 1 of the Competition Act 1998. So these companies which are being targeted in this first investigation by the CMA are the BBC, BT Group PLC, IMG Media Limited, including Premier League Productions, ITV PLC, Sky UK, and Sunset and Vine Productions Limited. This investigation was updated on the 3rd of April 2024, so last week, with an ongoing assessment of information gathered in respect of the purchase of freelance services supporting the production and broadcasting of sports content in the UK between March and May 2024. So, in plain English, the CMA has allowed itself more time to in continue in this investigation into the production and broadcasting of sports content in the UK. The second investigation, launched in October 2023, relates to suspected anti-competitive behavior relating to freelance and employed labor in the production, creation, and or broadcasting of television content, excluding sports. So this time, the SCMA is looking also at the production and uh, broadcasting of events, but excluding sports content. More specifically, the investigation concerns the activities of his undertakings in relation to the purchase of services from freelance providers and the employment of staff who support the production, creation, and or broadcasting of television content in the UK, excluding sport content. Again, the BBC is uh, being investigated in this second investigation. Hartswood Films Limited, Hat Track Productions Limited, again, ITV PLC is being investigated, Red Planet Pictures Limited, System Pictures Limited, and Tiger Aspect Productions Limited. The crux of this uh, second investigation is whether all these production companies may have colluded by informally fixing freelancers' wages rates. 
So further investigatory steps and um, assessment of evidence is done by the CMA between April and October 2024 in relation to his second investigation. And then the third and last investigation launched in March 2023 relates to some suspected anti-competitive conduct in relation to fragrances and fragrance gradients. The CMA launched an investigation again under Chapter 1 of the Competition Act 1998 into suspected breaches of competition law. This relates to the industry sector of fragrances and fragrance ingredients for use in the manufacture of consumer products such as household and personal care products. So in January 2024, the CMA extended the investigation to include suspected unlawful coordination by several undertakings involving reciprocal arrangements relating to the hiring or recruitment of certain staff involved in the supply of fragrance and or fragrance ingredients. In this third investigation, the businesses which are being investigated by the CMA are Firmenic International SA, a Swiss company, another Swiss company called Givaudan SA, International Flavors and Fragrances Inc., which is American, and Simrise AG, which I believe is uh, uh, German, as well as other entities within their corporate groups, including their UK subsidiaries. In its annual plan for 2023-2024, the Competition and Market Authority referred to its current focus on competition issues in labor markets in the following terms, referring to it as a priority in relation to its strategic aim of ensuring that people can be confident they are getting great choices and fair deals. And I quote here, more broadly on labor markets, we have produced guidance for employers on how to avoid anti-competitive behavior, such as no poaching agreements, where two or more businesses agree not to approach or hire each other's employees. Our microeconomics units research strategy includes work on labor market power. That is the extent to which employers are able to keep wages or working conditions below competitive levels. This CMA annual plan highlights that with the cost of living crisis and the time when finances are under a particular pressure, the CMA wants to clamp down on cartel behavior and unilateral effects impacting household income and labor markets and therefore is actively pursuing collusive behavior that affects finances and household incomes. Indeed, in February 2023, the CMA issued guidance to support employers to identify and avoid collusion through wage fixing, no poaching agreements, and information sharing. In this guidance, the Competition and Markets Authority highlighted three areas of particular risk in labor markets. No poach agreements, which are agreements where two or more businesses agreed not to approach or hire each other's employees or not to do so without the current employer's consent. Wage fixing agreements are agreements between two or more businesses to fix employees' salaries or other employment benefits. The CMA noted that this could include agreeing to pay the same wages or setting maximum caps for pay. Wage fixing agreements were given as an example of buyer cartels in the UK horizontal guidelines published by the CMA in August 2023. And, and last but not least, information sharing, where businesses share sensitive information about terms and conditions of employment. The CMA highlighted that this could cover freelancers and contracted workers as well as permanent employees. Then in January 2024, the CMA published a 192 pages long research report by the new microeconomics unit, which is a part of the CMA which conducts research to inform the CMA of emerging economic issues. And so this new report is entitled Competition and Market Power in UK Labour Markets, and it focuses on employer market power and market concentration. This report is intended to provide an evidential basis to support policy making in relation to labor markets in the UK, as well as further research into competition and labor markets. So why is the CMA concerned about competition law and labor markets? 
Let's have a look at the key takeaways from this um, CMA's report with 192 pages report. Some of the key findings in the report are that market concentration varies significantly across labor markets. Overall, the level of employer market power, i.e. the ability of firms to pay workers less than the value of a contribution to the firm's output in the UK has, since 1998, been relatively stable or declining. Also, labor market concentration, i.e. how many firms there are in a particular market in the UK, is roughly the same as 20 years ago, despite significant changes to the structure of the labor market, including the rise of the gig economy and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there is substantial industry variation in market concentration across labor markets, which can impact wage levels. Geographically, labor markets are much more concentrated outside London and the South East. So the second key finding from the report is that the law of non-compete clauses may need updating some non-competition clauses which restrict the ability of employees to work for rival firms for a period of time after leaving their current employer do not generally breach UK competition law. However, this report finds that around 26% of UK workers are affected by non-compete clauses, which prevent them from joining a competitor, even in low paid jobs. Given the prevalence of non-compete clauses across the economy and their impact on worker mobility, the CMA considers that UK employment law may need updating. This supports the UK government's intention announced in May 2023 as part of a package of measures to boost the productivity of UK businesses to legislate to limit post-term non-compete clauses in employment agreements to three months. That would be interesting if this is implemented. Sarah Cardell, who is the CEO of the Competition and Markets Authority, has stated that the CMA will use the findings of this report to inform its work in combating anti-competitive conduct in labor markets, including its existing or previously mentioned three investigations. This report's findings will be used to inform broader policy developments, such as the increase in the number of self-employed people in the gig economy, for example. Another reason for which the CMA is concerned about competition law and labor markets is that there's been a global interest relating to competition law and labor markets. The CMA is not alone, indeed, in focusing on labor markets competition law violations. There is a global trend of competition authorities worldwide showing an increasing interest in potential anti-competitive conduct in labor markets in recent years. The US Department of Justice, the DOJ, and the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, were the first to take a stance on competition issues in labor markets when they published guidance in October 2016. The DOJ and FTC have been particularly interested in no poach agreements and announced the first criminal charges for a no poach agreement in 2021. There have also been several civil class actions brought by employees against employers. For example, a claim was brought by nurses, which resulted in the award of treble damages for wage refixing and settled actions for a large payout against Disney uh, by animators in this case. In January 2023, the FTC announced a proposed rule that would ban nearly all post-employment non-compete agreements with limited exceptions. Similarly, Canada has impl implemented a no-poach ban. In a 2021 speech, Competition Commissioner Margaret Vestager indicated that the European Commission was interested in non-classic cartels, i.e. some anti-competitive conduct in labor markets, including no poach and wage fixing agreements, as an area of enforcement activity. She also highlighted wage fixing agreements as an example of a buyer cartel with a very direct effect on individuals. At 
a new wide level, the European Commission announced and conducted in November 2023 its first ever dawn raids carried out in relation to a suspected no poach agreement and associated anti competitive exchange of information in the online food delivery sector. There have been numerous investigations into alleged competition law infringements in labor markets in recent years, with cases in Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Hungary, Lithuania, Portugal, Romania, Spain in the EU, as well as Brazil, Colombia, Switzerland, Turkey, and the USA, as we mentioned before. These investigations span a wide range of sectors, including banking, healthcare, sports, and software. For example, in France in 2017, the French Competition Authority sanctioned the competitors in the, the floor covering sector for having adopted a tacit non-aggression agreement or a gentleman agreement. Um, this agreement prohibited the companies from actively soliciting each other's employees for a number of years. The companies had also exchanged information on salaries, including planned increases and bonuses awarded to employees. In January 2023, the French Directorate General for Competition, Consumer Affairs and Fraud Control, called the DGCCRF, responsible for local anti-competitive practices, fined metal recycling companies for having conducted a no poach agreement covering the whole French territory as part of a divestment deal. The DGCCRF considered that this agreement went beyond what was necessary for the completion of this merger due to the national scope of the undertaking, which covered a larger territory than the one in which a seller offered its services prior to the divestment and its reciprocity. So what are the next steps for the Competition and Markets Authority with respect to competition law and labor markets? In her speech on the 25th of January, 2024, CMA's CEO, Sarah Cardell, reiterated that the CMA's current interest in potential competition issues in labor markets, but stressed that the competition rules do not generally regulate contracts between an employer and an employee. She added that the CMA, in line with international competition authorities, does not intend to scrutinize genuine collective bargaining between self-employed workers and employers. However, it is anticipated that during the course of 2024, in addition to the above mentioned potential UK legislative reform to restrict the duration of non-compete clauses to three months, there will be an increase in competition enforcement in labour markets, particularly in respect to no poach and wage fixing agreements, both in the UK and globally. Similarly, as a result of the increased scrutiny of labour markets, there could be a rise in private claims, especially concerning equal pay. The CMA is particularly interested in clamping down on what may otherwise be seen as standard business practice. It is therefore critical for all businesses, irrespective of the industry they compete in, to ensure human resources and recruitment departments are fully familiar with competition law compliance and training programs that care is taken to avoid potentially infringing conduct in this context. Members of those teams need to be aware of potential areas of concern where speaking to their peers in other businesses to mitigate competition risks. Employers and HR professionals across all sectors and industries should therefore take this opportunity to review their use of non-compete provisions and, of course, ensure that they are observing the CMA's guidance on wage fixing, no poaching agreements and information sharing. Are there any agreements with competitors, commercially or in recruitment, where it is explicitly set out that they will not approach each other's employees? Has the company agreed with its competitors that they will not pay above a certain amount or the terms on which it will employ staff? Does the company routinely contact competitors to benchmark themselves? If so, advice should be sought on how to proceed to minimize the risk of a CMA investigation. This is it from me today. Thank you so much for attending and do not hesitate to share and also to like our content 
on any of the podcast aggregators that you like, Apple, uh, iTunes, and uh, Spotify, etc. We are on all the podcasts, and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye for now.